Hello everyone. If you've been in IT from the late 90s, early 2000s, you've probably seen one of these gateway binders before. I found one recently myself and it has all sorts of goodies in it. It's I'm not gonna go through the whole disc because there are or whole binder because there are product keys on there that probably shouldn't be leaked to the world, even if the software is long and to support, but Tell you, there's a lot of Windows 2000, Office XP, Office 2000, Windows XP for Dell. And then, there was one towards the end that caught my attention. If I can open it with one hand, there was Exchange Server Service Pack 3, and then you got Exchange Server itself and this is version 5.5 which i've never actually seen in action anywhere i've been in it for probably a better part of 20 years so out of curiosity i'm going to install it on something that's where the real fun comes in and i will show you shortly yep we're gonna make it interesting you have two Compaq Armada laptops, the left and the middle one. They're both 7770 DMT series. And then we have an LTE 5280 with Windows 98 on it, which I'm going to leave alone to the very end. This guy on the left, I'm going to make my Exchange server. This one I'm going to turn into a domain controller. Exchange 5.5 requires Windows NT4, no more, no less. So if you even had some NT Server 3.51 hanging around, it simply won't install. If you're gonna try think of trying this on Windows 2000, it won't install. Because you're working with Active Directory and that wasn't even a thing yet when Exchange 5.5 and Windows NT came out. So as you can tell, I did most of the work on this one. I installed Service Pack 6 and NT4 on this machine. We got networking going and I installed the graphics card driver. There's plenty of work to be done on this machine, but we're gonna focus most of our work on that center one. So first thing you gotta do is just grab your handy NT server disk and put it in your CD drive. Uh-oh, this one's not gonna be easy. We have a problem already. Where is the CD drive? We don't have one. So we have to get a little creative. First thing is first, you will need to erase this hard drive before we do anything whatsoever. I just use a commodity Windows 98 startup disk. We'll just do it without CD-ROM support. Now you're gonna you're gonna probably ask, sure, we're making this partition for Windows 98, making just a basic fat partition, and how are we gonna get the contents of the CD on there? Very good question. There's a couple ways you could do it. The fastest way in the case of this Armada, is that you could take the hard drive out of the machine, put it in a USB enclosure, copy the contents of the disk over, put it back in, be done with it. We're gonna delete partition number two. Get to 
do this again. Three reboots. Now we get the little F disc again. Now, if you're using a Windows 95 OSR2 startup disc or 98, you want to hit no. Because Windows NT4 does not recognize FAT32 partitions. And no matter what, we have to start off with a FAT partition. So now we'll control alt delete again to restart the computer. without C not support again because that's just gonna waste valuable seconds. Now we'll want to do a format C colon S. Not entirely sure if this is even necessary, but let's try without putting system files on there. I don't know if this is going to work, but this is going to take a little bit. It's a three gig drive. So as soon as this gets done, we'll be back and uh, we'll continue on. Okay, so our drive is formatted, so we will press enter now. So now to answer the original question, how are we gonna load this on a computer without a CD drive? And as previously mentioned, you could take the drive out and put in an external USB and copy the files that way, but I found this, a parallel CD-ROM. I'm going to use that for today. Try doing this one-handed. Let me tell you, this was not an easy thing to find drivers for. As far as I know, no beige compact ever came with a USB port on board. I think the Armada 7700 series can have an add-on USB card, but the LTEs cannot. So next thing we've got to do is load the drivers for this thing. I'm just going to do it temporarily.
Yeah, we got a CD drive. And now we're gonna put back our 98 startup disc. Little prep work. I'm going to make a directory called NT4CD. And I'm going to do an X copy. A little bit of a shortcut. You could just copy the I386 directory off your disk and that'll save time and space. And I believe it's the E. And this will take a little bit, so as soon as that's done, we will continue on. All right, our file copy operation is done with no errors, so we're gonna now browse to our directory. And some of you may ask, why am I copying this to the hard drive? Well, if you have a built-in CD-ROM, probably don't have to do this step. If you can boot off the disk, boot off the disk. That's the most ideal thing, but I don't have that capability. The parallel CD-ROM will disappear halfway through the install and you still need it. So we'll do that. Okay. So it looks like I copied the whole I-83, I-386 directory in here. So now the next thing you want to do is run WinNTB. The B, what that does is, uh, if you don't specify that, it'll ask for diskettes or, and we don't need to do that, so. Now, at this point, if you have a system directory on your machine, it may ask you to lock the drive and restart to do that. That's very easy to do. All you type in is lock and then C colon, but it didn't hear, so. We'll move on with this next step. It, this is asking for where the Windows NT files are. Oh, yep, I got asked for it, so. You'll get to see that in action. go without the CD-ROM support again. That's special. Well, so now let's try this lock C, see what it does. Now we can take the disk out of the drive. And if you install Windows 2000 or two, Server 2003 or XP, this first part will look very similar. Not exact, but similar. And I just hope that this doesn't, this machine doesn't have a bad hard drive or anything. That'll be my luck. Okay, so this is going to copy some files. This is going to take a little bit. So as soon as this step goes through, we will continue on. And it's ready for a reboot. So we shall do that.
This part generally goes pretty fast, even on a slower drive like this one. One thing to note in the DOS portion of the setup, you may want to run a program called Smart Drive before you try to install. That may speed things up a little bit. I did not on this one, so it took over an hour to do the DOS portion. All right, so I'm going to press enter. Don't need to specify anything there. And unlike Windows 2000 and XP, you actually have to use page down to go to this license agreement. Generally don't have to do anything here. And you want to select the C drive and you really want to convert it to NTFS. Good thing the hard drive is not a politician or we wouldn't be getting past anything, right? This part definitely looks more like Windows 2000 or XP. And I think this will go quick enough to the point where I'm gonna leave the camera sit here. Center to restart. and we're slowly getting there. At this point, Windows NT setup will convert this volume to NTFS or right after the check disk is done, it will do that. This will just take a couple of minutes with what we have on this drive.
that's going to take a little bit longer because this is the drive that originally came with this machine. The exchange server to the left of me, or air quote server, has a 120 gig hard drive in it, although I think it only detects the first 8 gigs of it, so really not doing a lot, but it's not, that drive will be repurposed soon enough. and our conversion is complete. So we'll go for the setup. And now it'll ask for a CD key, which is on the back of the case, if you so happen to have one. I'm going to set the computer down or set the camera down while I put that in. One other thing to note is that you will have to manually tab over to that second field. You can't, the program doesn't automatically do that. So the product key is actually two parts. All right. We're going to fit this. because this will be our domain controller and this will be our primary domain controller because we don't have a new we don't have anything on here at all not going to create the emergency desks I leave this to default there's really not much left to select here wired to the network, install IIS. This is actually IIS 2.0. By the time we're all said and done on the exchange box, this will be up to IIS 4.0. I don't think we need it for the web server, so I'm going to skip that. Now, if you do not have a supported network adapter in this machine, you cannot continue. And I'm going to go to my disk and hope it reads. And that's the card I have. It's a 3Com 3C574TX. It's a 10100 PCM CIA card. 
all three computers have the same card. Leave the disk in until it tells you to remove it. So next, I'm gonna uncheck IPX, SPX, because we're not using that anywhere. This stuff you can leave defaults, and then you go next. This is default for this card. I am not going to use DHCPs. This is a domain controller. Well, I thought for sure it would prompt to put in an IP address, but I guess it didn't. Right now we're installing the basics of Windows networking. And you heard the disc go briefly there at the end, so that's why you don't remove the disc until it tells you to. Ah, there we go. An improperly configured network will plague everything, even back in these days. And I just leave the defaults. And we start the network. This thing does not light up. So now this is the point where you name your domain. I'm leaving it. Oh, I guess I can't. Alright, it's gonna do the time zone. I'm in central, so I'll just go right to that. And I do have a I do have a a graphics driver that's on the other computer. I will install that at a later point. I believe this is the last stretch of file copying that the setup itself does. I'm not exactly sure what this security means. Maybe it's file permissions, perhaps.
If you do want to mess around with Windows NT4, I suggest uh, VMware Workstation or the Virtual Box, even. Whatever you, whatever you do, do not use Hyper-V, because your mouse will not work. It'll move it around, but it will not register any clicks. Go figure, the Microsoft product doesn't work, right? Okay, so we are we have completed the install, so we will restart. And we can take the disk out at that point. That should conclude the point where we need the disk apps. Save yourself 30 seconds, you can just press enter straight away there. And this part's very similar to what we see today. Let that do its thing. My network card at this point did light up, so it looks like that did install. I'm gonna go over to my Windows 98 machine and see if I can ping this domain controller. Oh. The good news is I can ping the domain controller. The bad news is, what did I make the password? Well, folks, I think we hit a snag. One more password that I think it could be. If it ain't that, then I'm gonna have to, yeah, I'm gonna have to take this offline and I'm gonna have to figure out what I did with this password. All right, after all of that, we're finally in. Ended up reinstalling Windows NT. So next thing we wanna do is install our service pack. Which I was proactive and at least in theory, was proactive and should be able to get those over the network. Maybe. Oh, 
hoping our service pack installed didn't handicap anything. Sure looking that way. Oh. Hey, you got all sorts of things going wrong here, I guess. There we go. I'll drag that over. This is a service pack. Ugh. Copy. That's my video driver. So, this is the service pack. And you need the high encryption one in order to do anything, otherwise, your install will stop. disclaimer at this point I probably should have put this at the beginning of the video do not if you do try this at home don't put it on the internet put it in its own little separate network off the internet especially the exchange sign because you open yourself up the bad guys you might as well just take your front door off from an IT standpoint basically if you do dare put this on the internet so there's my little disclaimer so and that, on that note, Once the service pack's installed and we have our users on here, that, that's pretty much all I'm going to do with this particular machine. The exchange box will install the option pack because that does require it and will install all the other fun stuff, of course. Okay, it must have opened the video card driver. Huh? That's what we'll do then. We'll get to show you that while that's doing its thing. So you go over to settings and you'll go to display type, you'll change. And do keep in mind NT4 does not have a device manager like you would see in Windows 95, 98, or any other modern version of Windows. So that's why we gotta go through it this way. Maybe shouldn't have done this while trying to extract a service pack, but oh well. There we go. Have disk. Goodness. Used to the fast computers, you don't have to wait on this slow stuff. It's just insufferable. Okay. 
cancel that. We don't need A drive. I will hold off on that for a bit. And I did extract mine to the desktop. It's an S3. And let's see. Right here is a convenience. Yes. So we got to browse for the files again. So the service pack install is very straightforward. Typically, you want both of these checked. You need the top one checked, obviously. I'm not gonna back up the files. This is a brand new copy of NT, so I'm just gonna go ahead and install. Once this gets done, it'll ask you to restart. I'm gonna let this go do its thing offline. Once we're done reinstalling that, or installing the service pack, then we will return to our video. And we're in the middle of a restart after the service pack install. I'm just gonna focus on this one just long enough to verify that service pack six did did install. And sure enough, you can tell you right there it is service pack six, so. on to the, the other Compaq Armada, which is going to be my exchange server. I'll do, although I do have to wait for this machine to turn on over to the right of me, I gotta remember how to get this on an NT domain. So it's both, in the modern windows, it's in the, uh, under system properties, but that is not the case in NT. All right, I think it's a network. All right, so yeah, that is indeed where we do change this, so. I'm gonna try. Oh. Let's see if I can. Uh... This does predate Active Directory, so things are a little bit different. And it did put me on with no trouble, so we will restart this machine. And then the fun begins. But while we're waiting for that, I'm gonna log into the domain control. I'll show you changing resolutions on a Windows NT box. This is both true for NT workstation and NT server. I think by the time we get into this thing, it'll the other box will be ready. It does have a much newer hard drive in it, though. So, so, oh well, it went straight to it. So. it up as high as it'll go. We'll go 800 by 600 as that's what this LCD can handle. And before you do anything, you have to hit test. And that'll bring up a little pattern like this. And it's various colors for various resolutions. If you get this, then you're off to the races. So yes, so if you did see the bitmap, you hit apply. Folders are doing up. Oh, it's uh, probably still thinking because the computer just turned on. All right, so let me log into this guy. If 
fake domain is what I called my domain, if you were paying attention. And we are en route. So now the fun begins. So before you install Exchange, you have to install the Windows NT 4.0 option pack. It does come with the disc. I did put it on this machine. Oh, I must install Internet Explorer 4.01. You know, I thought it did it automatically, but hold on here. What's this auto run try to do? So open. Oh, that's special. Set up CD. Okay, well, I never tried running it off of a... a disk like, or off of a network share like this before, so this is new. If you're on a CD, this is what you would get. And you just go over and hit install on the left. Look at this web browser. This is this is quite a sight. Just go ahead and hit. Oh, we don't have to do that. Duh. So yeah, if you installed Service Pack Six like I did, that step that I just did, don't worry about it. Let's see if I can cancel this. All right, perfect. But you do want to install Win the Internet Explorer four one or four oh one before you do much of anything. Standard installation. And this Windows desktop update. You remember this pain in the butt in Windows 98? That's pretty much baked your desktop into a web page. We'll install it for giggles. By the time we're all said and done with this option pack, your Windows NT installer will look a lot like Windows 98 and going away from the Windows 95 look. So this is gonna take a little bit. I don't know how long it takes on a penny one, but at the end of this, it will restart. I'll go ahead and do that. And once that restart is completed, we will be back with the magic of video editing. Alright, so after the restart, we got this little wizard that comes up. The one part that was not recorded is that after it did the install, it did an optimization and then it said to press OK to restart. Let's see what this does. Not very fast, apparently. Lovely. I'll close that out because frankly I don't care but as you can tell looks a little bit more like Windows 98 now so now let's install the meat and potatoes of this thing let's install the option pack Let me run this program yes yes Yes. Now, 
accept the license agreement. We're gonna go typical. This will install IIS 4. Perhaps if I hit custom, I probably could have got a better idea of what this actually installs, but oh well. I think the big thing Exchange is looking for was the newer, or new to it, IIS 4. I think we're at version 10 now on the server 2016-2019 world. It's quite a few have been released since. And I think at this point, I'm going to cut this part out. If it does anything interesting, I will revisit. Otherwise, we will continue after a restart. All right, I'm back after another reboot. I wish I would have let that install go on camera, but oh well. So now we're going to try the Exchange 5.5 installer. Set up server and components. All right, that doesn't look too good. Cause it, well, let's try to load something. I don't think it's designed to run off of a network share, but. We'll see what other trouble we run into once we get down and dirty with this. Let's do a complete and custom, man. So yeah, you'll get Exchange Server, you'll get the Exchange Server Administrator, Books Online, and Outlook Web Access, which is OWA. This is the part that needed the option pack. So let me go ahead and press OK. This one uses the same format product key as NT does, but you can you don't have to tab over to the second field. So that's kind of cool. And license agreements. Hooray. Let's do that. And this registers it with the NT domain. And one thing I forgot to do, I want to show you how to create a user in Windows NT. Ah, well, I'll use the mouse that I have attached to this. It's called User Manager for Domains. This is your, this is what they, this came before AD basically. So we're gonna go user one. Now if it's gonna accept the password, that's simple, but I really am not concerned. It's about time this is uploaded. I 
It won't care. It'll be gone. All right, so now we're installing stuff over here. And while it's installing, we'll dig into this a little bit more. Pretty simple interface. If you want to add somebody to a group, we'll add user one to domain admins. Press OK. This gives you a home drive or a login script. The hours that somebody can log in. Very primitive compared to what we have today. And that's just about done installing, I would, I think. I don't know if Exchange requires a reboot. I don't think this does, but about the time I think that or remember something I'm gonna remember it wrong this is, this video much like my life is a comedy of errors Yeah, hard drive light is was on solid for a while. And this is the more this is the laptop with more RAM in it. The one I'm using as an AD controller has 16 megs of RAM. This one has 48. I think the processor speeds are identical. This one also has a newer hard drive on it, so it should be a small speed advantage on the exchange box or exchange notebook over the AD notebook. It's a 120 gig drive I think I ripped out of a Vista era laptop and the domain machine is, has its original IBM 3 gig hard drive. Exchange is a pig even in the old days. Yeah, we run the optimizer.
I have no idea what this does, but we're about to find out together. Oh, okay. So that just basically tells you how what we gotta do with exchange and how many users and all that fun stuff. And I think here we can leave the defaults. So our only client is going to be the LTE 5280 once this is all said and done. Oh, there we go. So let's go next and see. Just ask where you want to store logs and your store and all that fun stuff. So we'll go ahead and we'll let it do its thing. Even though there's next to nothing to move. And lots of services to restart at the end of this whole thing. Not a speedy machine. And it looks like that closed out the installer. I thought I've... All right, so our next course of action is gonna be the service pack and I have service pack three was part of that packet of discs we found in the beginning. So that's what I'm going to go with for now. Maybe. I'm just gonna figure out how in the wide world to install the sucker. That looks like that's about right. Cool.
There we go. Windows always stumbles upon those smaller files as the DLLs are moving along, those HTML files weren't. This part took a while the last time around. I hope it doesn't take super long this time. Seems like the patch is taking longer than the original Outlook install. I wouldn't be surprised if it tries to do another optimization. I don't think it's necessary at this point since we didn't make any changes, but we'll cross that bridge when we get that far. Now let's open, so now we should be able to get into the fun of this. So we're gonna open up Exchange Administrator. Far cry away from uh, what we have today. And we 
can set this as a default since we it's the only mail server we have and ever will have on this network and maximize the window maximize both windows protocols and I noticed one protocol that did not install is SMTP but we'll add our users first I think this is where you gotta go to do that Uh, new mailbox, there we go. And you gotta tie this to a Windows NT account. And it does see them. So we will do that. Ah. A value for the alias field. Okay, I'm trying to do this. Here, one. Let's see if it. There we go. All right. So we got our first user. Let's add our second user. Good. I'm glad things are a lot more streamlined than they are. They were back then. Change things up a little bit here. Hope that doesn't cause any problems. So, next thing I want to do, I want to see if I can install that SMTP service. I think that was it. the network icon. Alright, so with the magic of video editing, I'm going to figure that part out and once I have that installed, then we will be back. Alright, and we're back. So, to get past that error, you have to go to the network under control panel. It's the same place you set a static IP and NT4. I believe it was protocols is where I went. Went to properties, over to DNS, and I had to fill in that. I had to fill in a domain name, otherwise nothing works. So all oh, other host. So we'll go hit yes to this. Works for me. Oh, we got a new protocol, but not SMTP, so that's, we got to figure out how to get that on here. Alright, we're back. 
didn't find anything explicitly about the SMTP services. I think that part's really for Outlook anyway. I could have sworn there was something about it, but I have no idea. So we'll see how this goes. And did find out something during my process of testing offline. The Exchange 5.5, the OWA requires Internet Explorer 3 or higher. And T4 comes with Internet Explorer 2 or higher. If you recall, the domain controller, I didn't bother installing any of that fun stuff on the option pack. But I kind of had myself handcuffed into it. But anywho, I would show you at this point the webmail side or the Outlook, the OWA, Outlook Express, Outlook Anywhere, whatever you want to call it. Well, not Outlook Express, but... This is typically a DNS name, but for our purposes, we're just demonstrating the basics of this program. Go to the IP address of your server, slash exchange. And it should let you in at some point. My God. Yeah, imagine this on. There we go. I hate to imagine this on minimal hardware. I, I don't know what the exact requirements are for Exchange 5.5. And you can tell here it does say 5.5 Service Pack 3. So. Here, in the login window, you'll put the alias that you set up. I'm going to do the user 2's. I think I made a shortcut, and we're going to see. Uh, user 2, I think is what I did. I hope it's not case sensitive. If I come back with a, a user window. Oh, here we go. And there you go. Very primitive. Nice contacts. So we go to inbox, there's nothing in there. Create a new mail message, compose a new post message. I'm not sure what that is. You can check for new mail there. So this does not refresh on its own. Move and copy folder, deleted items, create a new folder, delete the current folder, the deleted items. So things are not the most user friendly here, but let's make a new email. Let's see what that looks like. Very, very primitive. And this is just Internet Explorer stuff, so this doesn't tell us anything. In Outlook, you can press the 2 button, but here you got to be a little bit smarter than that. So we're going to do the check names here. And there's our user 1. So let's accept this choice. some stuff in there. It's a very clumsy setup in my opinion, but this was 1997, so who knows? I don't know what links is, but we'll we'll attach that. Yeah, add attachment now. And options. Eh, pretty boring stuff. Let's try send and see if we get bounced back. No bounce backs. I suppose I could use another. Yeah, 
Now we're getting somewhere with the other computer. I'll bounce over there quick and holy cow, it opened up a lot of windows. Oh, well, let's do that. Let's try Outlook just for giggles. This is Outlook XP, so we'll go through the wizard. I don't know if it's going to work quite this way, but we're going to find out. On Outlook 97 and 2000, they called this internet mail. They didn't even uh, define this as a exchange at the time. Do not be matched the name and the address list. Okay. I wonder if it just needs the alias. Oh, it did see something. Okay, so you put your alias there. Let's continue on. Oh, there we go. I just say, Outlook is retrieving. We can cancel the request or minimize this message at any time. Looks like that might do. Looks like my other computer is finally loaded. Gotta go through the usual BS of uh, the Internet Explorer wizard, whoopee, right? don't know if this, I have any email from this yet, so this might not be a problem yet. Oh, hold on. And it's not complaining, so that's a good sign, but let's go back to our other computer here real quick and let's Get an Internet Explorer. Very, very slow machine. It's probably trying to get out to the Internet, so I'm going to put the kibosh on that. Won't get anywhere anyway. So we, again, we'll browse to the exchange box that I created. We'll log in as user one. I believe there's a step you can do to eliminate this step, but I'm not that concerned about it. All 
Yeah, we got two new, we got two emails, so that's good. So Outlook Web Access, that's what it officially stands for, OWA. Jesus. Yeah, this exchange engine is far more polished than it was back in 1997. That's some crap in there. Let's see what it does. And we already have an email over here, so Outlook is working, OWA is working. One thing I did not test, let me bring back Outlook, guys. One thing I did not, forgot to do is test sending out from Outlook. Any minute now, today. It's asking for a login right now, so let's get that out of the way. All right. Let's try sending. The Outlook is definitely far more polished, and this is also Outlook XP, so. All right. And I already got my email, so we got all. Check over here. Very slowly. And there we go. So I'm going to call that good, and that's the basics of Exchange 5.5. So again, I do not recommend installing these real time other than for to play around or if you've got some extreme legacy stuff that is off the internet on its own separate network, that's about it. And absolutely never run a server on laptops like this. All servers should have redundant hard drives, good backups, and this is about as opposite as you get for that. So, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, constructive criticism beyond what I already said, feel free to reach me up in the comments section. Thank you again for watching this incredible comedy of errors.